It's been an interesting couple of weeks in the factory. We were approached by the coordinators of STEM 2022, which is a conference that brings together experts in STEM with educators and innovators. They approached us because they wanted a badge, a conference badge that was interactive and electronic. And this is the story of what we came up with. Now we already prepared a short video showing the manufacture of the badges that made it to the conference. So first enjoy that and then join me back here and we can discuss the prototypes we made along the way. I'd like to introduce you to the STEM 2022 conference badge designed and manufactured right here in Newcastle. These conference badges feature an interactive game so you can play rock, paper, scissors with other conference members and keep a running score. Let's look at the front of the badge. At the top, there are three components. An infrared transmitter and receiver allow your badges to communicate wirelessly so your choices in the game are sent and received between you and your opponent. This means that for proper communication, you should be pointing your badges towards each other and not away at an angle. There's also a green status LED in the middle that lets your opponent know you're up for a game, and it flashes while you hold your selection. On the back side of the board, find three buttons labeled rock, paper, and scissors. To play a game, you hold down your selection and your opponent responds by holding down their selection. Above the buttons are a win and loss indicator lamp and a draw is shown by illuminating both at the same time. Across the center, we have a row of LEDs that keeps track of your running score, shown in binary. To calculate your score, simply add the numbers that are above the LEDs. For example, if LEDs 16, 4, and 1 are illuminated, that sums to 21, so we have a score of 21. Let's demonstrate a game, and for that, I'll need an opponent. G'day Luke, what's your score? I've got three at the moment. I've only got uh, two. All right, let's play. All right, ready? One, two, two three. three. Hey, I won. Oh, uh, that's a loss I'm for me. four now. So you're on four? Yep. One, two, three. <sighs> oh, I right. got him. <laughs> and one more. One, right, one more. two, three. Ah, oh, draw. Oh, well, I st still come out on top with four. And I'm still on three. All right. And that's everything you need to know to go and challenge other conference members and see if you can get the highest score. If you'd like to see the advanced manufacturing processes that went into creating these badges, then enjoy this short presentation.
So it took us a couple of runs to be happy with the design. Our version 0.1 design was literally just a hardware design. There's no artwork on this badge. We got the schematic laid out. The first version, we did a artwork tone test. So we played with mixing the solder mask, copper, and silk layers to see what kind of color tones we can get for the artwork that we put on it. You can see we have a buzzer on this version, but we decided against that because actually that would be really annoying at a conference if someone was speaking and there was like constant buzzing from people playing games. So we axed that by the final version. We're running the at tiny 1616 microcontroller, which is a really tiny, like look at how small that microcontroller is. Really tiny, but decently featured microcontroller. We use that in a lot of our PicaDev products as well. And over here on the version 0.2, this has a bunch of fly leads on it because, well, on the first one, we didn't actually have a UPDI programming pin. We're also using this platform to get the power management correct. So you can see a bunch of leads that we've broken out to think so we could do things like measure the current draw of various elements, tune up the power management of the microcontroller, and then experiment with sleep mode so that we could put the microcontroller to sleep and get the power consumption really, really low so you can just leave batteries in it. This version 0.3 was the final like production candidate. This is identical in hardware to the badges that made their way to the conference, except the badges that went there would have had version 1.0 on them. So this is the mature circuit with pretty much minimal changes to the version 0.2. We replaced the buzzer with some win loss indicator LEDs. We added reverse polarity protection to the battery. That's just a P-channel MOSFET working like an ideal diode. And we were able to validate the power budget I think the standby current is like 350 nanowatts or something. It's um, it's you know the it, you'll get you'll easily get a year out of your batteries. Let's put it that way. To get absurdly low standby power, all the peripheries are of course switched off, and we even shut down the infrared receiver. We actually have a MOSFET sitting on the high side of that, so we can power and depower that only when necessary. These all use AAA alkaline cell or nickel metal hydride cell batteries as like a safe alternative to button cell batteries. Recent legislation in Australia means that you can't ship products that could be used by children with button cell batteries. For what is a simple idea, just play some rock, paper, scissors. It wound up being quite the design challenge. And so by all accounts, the STEM 22 conference and the badges were a resounding success. They seem to work as a really great icebreaker. Graham said that he played against every single person that turned up at the Core Electronics booth. The keynote speakers were fascinating, and we got to talk to a lot of dedicated educators and experts about STEM, PikaDev, and this cool project. And as always, if you'd like to see something a little bit closer or you just have some questions, open up a thread on the Core Electronics forums. Till next time, thanks for watching.